You've got questions? O'Reilly Auto Parts has answers. Need a pro you can trust? We've got that too. No matter what you need, our professional parts people have the training and expertise to help you do things right. Deep automotive knowledge, just one part that makes O'Reilly stand apart. The professional parts people. Oh, 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 O'Reilly. Auto Parts. Hashtag no music, no intro. Got to play it up. Camp is here. Camp is here. Kate winner of, I don't even know what bracket it was. Oh, I, I, I've been so busy. Who the, who the fuck I don't know. I've been so busy with work. I haven't even really kept up with it, but can, let's, let's get, can we give some appreciation to my, my dog, that boy Wolf. Ryan, oh, crowned Saints Twitter, <laughs> Saints Twitter king. How how's it feel, man? No, Bar- bargain being Rick oh, Ross no. in this bitch. Let's go. Bargain being Rick Ross, boy. I was dead, but <laughs> <laughs> that's probably the best thing to come out this whole motherfucker, though. Man, that dude was cutting me up, man. He blocked. He been blocked, but whatever he is, he was been cutting Locking my ass. Just... <laughs> I love. I almost unblocked him just because of that. I was like, I love that shit. <laughs> yeah, I don't. I don't. I don't know what to say about. It. Like every every sex said it perfectly. It's like that whole Twitter bracket thing is like just something you just can't explain to a normal person. It's no, like... bro, can't do it. <laughs> Can't do what it. the fuck is the fuck you supposed to say? Like <laughs> any anything that just let's like just like our shout out to our dude Evan Sachs. Just like he tweeted last night, like last night in in Twitter, say Twitter history, like you can't you can't explain that you can't explain that to like a normal person, bro. Like <laughs> can't, can't do it, bro. Can't, can't do, do it, it man. It's just, it's the weirdness of, of the Saints Twitter verse, bro. But it, you know it was fun, man. That shit was fun. You know, I don't. I don't really like popularity contests. And just takes me back to like fucking. I don't know, yep. junior high or some yep. shit. Like I'm like, Ugh. yep. Ugh. But you know, it was fun. Everybody had jokes. You know, something for the TL. Bored out, you. You know, Saints ain't signing no damn body. Nobody. It was something to pass the time. <laughs> but look, I take my W. Fuck it, I take my W. Yo, I love it. Put you know? put the crown 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 this man. Put it on. Put you it know, on your head. I, Underdog, you know, shout out to Nader. You know what I'm saying? That boy is a hustler, bona fide. You know, bona fide hustler. Been out chilling. You know, but hey, I got my squad. You know what I'm saying? We came through. Had had, had to rally him up. Had to get the people, got the movement going. You know? So, uh, I, I, yeah. apologize, I apologize that I didn't participate. Couldn't vote for you. But as... God damn, damn cool. God damn wholesome. My good, my good friend and host of the fucking pod couldn't get a vote. Hey, can't, couldn't vote, couldn't vote. But I did my part. I, I, you know what? I had a super shitty day at work yesterday, Monday, and I, I got off work and I saw what was going on Twitter. I said, you know, don't, don't like the way these polls going. Don't, didn't like it. Didn't like it, Ryan. And oh. you know what happened? The melon balance came in this morning. Hmm. Got that, got that push. You know, I you know, I just spread it, just spread it some things on the timeline that were hundred percent true, and then people did. <laughs> people <Dallas> did. Out. <laughs> just people just did what they did with it. So um oh, it was I went, I went to sleep last night. I was down, I was like. Down Yo. about 500, 500 votes. I was like, ah, oh, well, you know. Remind, it was a nice remind, little run. Reminds me of election day, bro. I went to bed at like 7.30. <laughs> I, was so like, good, huh? I was like, this nigga about to do it again. Dude, what? I was like, wow, Trump about to win this motherfucker. <laughs> I, I couldn't do it, Ryan. I, I said, you know, I'm going to bed. I, I was in, I was asleep by like 7, 7.30, bro. I woke up and was checking the timeline and people was all hype. I was like, what, what the hell did I miss? <laughs> oh, that shit was funny, bro. That was some funny shit. Yeah, but you know, and, shout, out and, to, shout out to Joe Horn's phone. <laughs> and, and this is 
you know, this is, this is the hashtag Saints Twitter podcast. And I mean, that's what makes our fan base. Like you, you, you're not going to any sporting fan base. I don't care. Football. You, you think, so you think people in, in, in baseball having fun like this, like they, they can't no. be, they can't be awake during an actual baseball game. Like <laughs> there's <Big> no, <laughs> the biggest of seeds. No other fan base, uh, you know, in any sport, I'll put us against any sport, regardless of, you know, there's, there's infighting, there's our little civil wars, whatever, the people who don't like each other. But I mean, we family to a degree, some, some people fuck them, but like, you know, for the most part, you know, we're family and like, we, we have fun, right? That's, that's, that's what we do. And so it was, it was, it was entertaining last night, bro. I was just joke. Joked out, Joe. You know, you know, I was thinking about it, though. You know what I love about uh, Saints Twitter, man? It's like our own little ecosystem. Yeah. Like if, like we could survive just with Saints Twitter. That's it, bro. Like, if, like, if, like, isn't that if, wild? Like, if, if like we were all like our own little fucking town, like we got you know Nola hat plug. She gonna take care of our gear. We got chefs. You know what I'm saying? Chef Rachel and Chef uh, Dominique. We got all kind of chefs and shit. We got, you know, we got. Uh, philanthropy, like with Allen got, and all them. We got people that's been served in the military. We got, we got, we got military. We got the navy. We got my, my man Evan Sachs got the got the gifts in the in the in the, in the um you know B- video editing, video shit, editing bro. and shit podcast host. We got like fifty fifty thousand <laughs> podcast hosts. <laughs> <shit like it. laughs> Plenty of them you know motherfuckers, like, included including us. Uh, Including us, man. We got football, savants. We got everybody. Like you name it, man. Like, like man, we got our own little. We universe, got, like we that. got Jerry. Uh, shout out. I don't know if you follow him, Jerry. Jerry Wiley. Fucking. I don't know if he's still a cop, but you know, we got the popos. If we like, come on. <laughs> just, I just. I mean, we, we don't need lawyers. a lot. We don't need a lot. We lawyers. Just need, we got lawyers. We, we just. Shit. We, got we just need shit. one. We just need one cop. We don't need. We don't need a lot. Just. Just, just need one. <laughs> Got Medicaid trail, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Come on, man. It just it's it, you're right, man. It's funny you say that because like I haven't even, even thought about that. We got can I can I say this on the, on the podcast? We got some thoughts. No, no shame in that at all. Like ain't no, no shame. Ain't no shame. Get go get what's yours, get what's the get is good. Like we you right, bro. You right. Act, you know, activists, political activists, you name it, man. We got it all, bro. We do, man. It's I love it's it. <laughs> um I guess I guess we should talk about the Saints, even though it's not a whole hell of a lot to talk about since our last episode. Uh, I mean, shit, ain't nothing to talk about. Uh, Marcus like signed his his tender, so I guess he's on the books for ten million. I know they're still look, working on a long term deal. Um, hashtag, you know, Alex Armahav, like he out you assembled. Let's go. Sir, yes, sir. I better know his name. Speaking Ryan, I don't. Ryan, I'm like, I don't, I don't got nothing else to talk. <laughs> <laughs> they they want to bring back our bring back the dude Nick Easton <laughs> at a lesser number. <laughs> I mean, I, I've done some deals. Yeah, I I've done some. You know, you know me. You know, you know. You've always said like this is obviously pre pre COVID, but like I should have started up a YouTube channel and do like, you know, thrifty shopping, you know, how, how men like, you know, can get good deals, you know, yeah, bro. shopped and thrifty, which is my specialty by the way. Um, and, and look good doing it. Like you don't look like fucking trash. Like you look good. Yo, I'm a thrifty shopper, especially like dress clothes and, and, and office clothing and shit like that. I have no idea. What, I, I, I know what the saints are doing. And um, I know you listen to the Mickey, the Nick, the Mickey Loomis pod, podcast he he did that he was a, yeah. a guest on, and let's let's just be real, bro. Like, ain't, ain't, ain't no money, like no stimmy, no stimmies in the books. For, for... <laughs> oh, remind me of the the, the Kanye skit. Oh, <laughs> um, like you know, like Chappelle said, I'm broke, nigga. I'm broke. I'm broke. Like, you got no money, That's it, bro. Like, it, it's funny because like every like I didn't have a whole bunch of hopes in free agency, but I had my couple, and then like every like 
day, date, you know, next day passes up. Oh, he's gone up. Oh, he's gone. <laughs> Kerry Hyder got signed today by the Seahawks. Uh, Jared, Jared Everett, also a Seahawk now. Like, I, I, just, just, I just give up, bro. <laughs> and people were like, hey, you know, we could maybe we could bring Janoris Jenkins back to the look back at a lower number. Nope. <laughs> Janoris got paid late two days later. He was I out. Mean, he re, Jack Rabbit rebounded. I mean, he went from getting cut by the Giants, like literally released, you yes. know what I'm saying, during the season to, you know, hey, hey, he, you know, he getting paid. Props to him. You know what I'm saying? He put you, the tape out. You know what's real funny is like, I was going to tweet a couple of days ago. I was like, damn, I wonder what, thank like, you. We, should we bring Eli Apple back? Can't even bring Eli Apple back no more, right? Bro, I, I swear to God, I thought the same thing. I saw him this morning. You said, who you get something? Bengals? The Bengals, yeah. I was like, ain't that a bitch? Like, hey, we can't even get Eli. Can't out we, here, man. we don't got, you got Eli money? No, we, we don't got no Eli money, bro. We ain't got Eli money, bro, because that would have been a nice little sign. And I'm not saying he would have been great, but he's a starter. He started at, you he, know, left cornerback, you know what I'm saying? Which is what we need. So, you know. And I think, I, I do think at some point when like the bark had been shopping, like it's kind of crazy too. Like we're talking about the Saints. There are still free, like T.Y. Hilton's like a free yeah. agent still. Like Sammy There's Watkins. There's still players out there, bro. Yeah, man. Like Melvin Ingram, still a free agent. So as the market, and it's like the market's already done cooled down tremendously, but the market will cool down even more so but like again, this is not the same Saints team. Like in the past, you could say like, "Yo, you you know, you've seen what we've done in the playoffs. We're close. We got Drew. Like, be that missing piece. Come join us. You know, go get chase the championship." Yeah. Are you? Can that yeah. really be your pitch when you got when you gonna be starting Jameis? <laughs> like, I, I don't you know. got Jameis or Taysom, baby. You know, <laughs> Jameis or Taysom, you be battle. <laughs> like, you know, I mean, if you you know, if you on the edge of your career. Like, eh. <laughs> you know, my man. You know, and uh, Jameis Winston, he had a, you know, he had a little press conference today. You know, just talking about, you know, just where he's at, a little checkup, or whatever. And he had real nice things to say about Drew Brees. He got kind of emotional, talking about, uh, you know, just watching Drew Brees over this last year and learning from him and how he always dreamed of just play, you know, just be around Drew and all that stuff, which I think is, he's, you know, he sounded pretty sincere about it. Um, and, you know, he sounded like a dude that's, you know, like he feels like he's about to start, you know what I'm saying? Like, and he said something that just kind of occurred to me. He was just like, he got to throw a pass in the playoff game. I was like, damn, that is crazy. He never threw a pass that's in the right, playoff man. game until that, until that one. Uh, that and didn't play. they get called back? No, oh, not touchdown. Tripping. No, that was a touchdown, that was a touchdown yeah. to, to Traquan against the Bucks. To Traquan, right, right, right. So you know, you know, I mean, you know, I mean, we'll see, we'll see what you know how the offseason plays out. But it's, I, 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 I mean, I'm not a, I'm not a betting person. I don't, I don't like betting because like you can fucking put money on fucking Jameis and then God forbid something happens in training camp and boom, we fucking all out of money. But like, if I was a betting person, I, I would put everything on Jameis being the starter, like. Yeah, everything. Me too. Like, I everything. just see it. I see it. Yeah, I mean, it, I mean, Ian Rappaport kind of reported something I think today that essentially, like, you know, Jameis pretty much has the inside, you know, inside track of being the starter. Which, okay. you know, Taysom had what his four starts, and we saw what mm-hmm. he did. Like, even if you throw out the Denver game, those three starts we saw, and all right, like, didn't work. Like, all right, buddy. Well, I mean, like, he won. He did win. You know, he won yes. those games. And but you know, it's like okay, is this something we could build around and go forward with? You know, I mean, you could do worse. You could do a lot worse than Taysom as a backup. You know, what I'm saying like if it's a backup as a starter. I mean, you got somebody that's on a team that has thrown for five thousand yards, has thrown for thirty plus touchdowns, has been a you know a decorated passer in college and in the NFL. You know, say what you want about him, but the dude can throw the fucking ball. Like, you know what I'm saying? And Taysom is a developmental thrower of the football. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Whereas Jameis Winston is not. There's no development as far as him throwing football, throwing the football. You know what I'm saying? So 
to me, it's not really much of a competition. It's like, okay, like Sean Payne could call it a competition, and I understand he has to, but it's 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 Jameis's jobs to lose. You know what I'm saying? It's it's a competition in like quotes, right? And no coach would like uh, no coach says so and so is the quarterback going in unless it's like a you know super franchise quarterback like we have right. with Brees. You know what I'm saying? So you know because Taysom, I mean, he's getting five point what five point five billion or whatever. Yeah, something like so that. Of course, you, of course, you're not gonna say yeah he's the starter because if Tom Payne said that, then the agent be like, hold up. <laughs> <laughs> Hold up, we we need to re look at look at that contract again. Like, you yep. know what I'm saying? Yep. So. I just I think the thing that's I, I mean, unless they feel the the cornerback two position or whatever, I think just we need to prepare. And it, this is when fun happens. Like it it is likely to be a down year for the Saints. There's, you know, expectations are not going to be through the roof. Um, but it's, it's like, because the way I'm thinking about it is they're in a position where they have so many holes, not so many, but they have holes. But in the draft, for instance, they may have, like, if they haven't fixed that cornerback position by come draft come, like, it's not like you could use in theory – we know they don't like the drive right, right receiver, but let's say this was the year they, they fell in love with the right receiver. Rondo Moore, right? Maybe yeah. it gives them some Brandon Cook vibes. I don't know, whatever. And they wanted to draft him at 28, but they still had that glaring need at corner. Like history tells you that the way the Saints operate, that corner would get the nudge over yeah. like a skill position player. So yeah. unless that that number two corner position is field. Maybe that's Richard Sherman. I don't know. Like, I just feel like in the draft, they're not going to be addressing, they're not going to be adding talent to the team where it's more of like a want or best position. It's uh-huh. like, we we're adding talent because we have to fill in these holes that we lost because of the cap situation. Mm-hmm. And usually, you know, that's not a situation we want to be in, you know, usually Saints operate as fit, you know, they go, we're going to off season with, uh, you know, musts, uh, you know, wants and needs, you know what I'm saying? And they try to fill those musts in free agency, maybe a few wants, and then just take care of the draft after that. I mean, they, they try to fill those musts and needs, hopefully in free agency, and then try to just, you know, play the board in the, in the draft. But right now it's like <laughs> we we gonna need musts, needs, and want <laughs> all in the draft. So you know it could be one of those things, one of those years, kind of like uh you know Eric McCoy where they like they just needed a center. Yeah, and they just went and got the highest rated center. They wasn't playing around, waiting until the third round or nothing like that. They just went and got him, and it could be like that at corner. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Like, like you said, you know Richard Sermon. There was that report out there, so. He could be in the mix at some point, but even then, it's like I'd still draft the corner. I'm not saying first round, but I'd still, oh yeah, I'd still be looking to get at least a you know a um a, a quality early, looking, yeah early round for sure. Yeah, absolutely. So I mean, we'll see, but that's a that's a big spot, man. Like even with Marshall, even though like even though the secondary most for the most part looks fine. You know, you still got CD Deuce, you got, you know, uh, you got Marcus Williams, you got, you know, uh, Marshall and Lattimore, uh, PJ Williams, they, they brought him back early. Oh, that's right, P, PJ back. Big, yeah. big, Pete Tizzle, Pete Tizzle, baby. Bro, when, when I saw that he was going on year seven in the league. That's crazy. I felt old as fuck. <laughs> Well, it got less the power, you know. So he was drafted in the round three. So first of all, his his first contract was four years, and so the Saints have brought him back on three times on one year deals. Hey, listen, it's like taking man. I have a particular set of skills. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They got, it, man. they got a particular set of skills, and you know, get, get to that. that 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 matters. I don't. I mean, how many times is PJ Williams? Come on the field, you know, it just gave us some snaps. You know what I'm saying? I mean, shit. 
<laughs> yes, it, it does. He, he's a good depth, uh, depth in the secondary. Like when, if he's out on on the boundary, and he's covering uh, Calvin Ridley. Oh. <laughs> And, and for some reason, it's going to happen. Like, I don't 100%. care how much. I don't care who's playing in front of him, but as some reason, PJ Williams going to run up on Kevin Ridley. Like, they're just going to have like two or three injuries that just happen out of nowhere. And here come PJ Williams. It's like, fuck. <laughs> you're so right, bro. You're so, you're so right. It's going to happen, man. Like, um, it's just so it's so I guess interesting, you know, to see what how this team is gonna be constructed. Cause I mean, obviously they're gonna add talent in the draft. At some point I expect them to add talent in free agency. We'll we'll see when. But it's just it's fascinating as a fan, you know, going going into like what potentially is gonna be a transitional year to see how how things are gonna look. No, nah, man, it's, it, I mean, this is, you know, lar- largely due to the pandemic, but also, you know, just how the Saints have approached the salary cap, you know, for the past 15 years. This is like, you know, something we, we were going to deal with at some point, you know, but the pandemic obviously made it worse because, you know, like Mickey Loomis was talking about, he was like, it's not like we can't forecast these things ahead. They planned, they they made they map they project the cap out two or three years and try to you know map out the situations how they're going to play out, but you know how can you predict the pandemic? You know you, they sitting there January last year they had no idea that this was going to arise and they right. thinking they were going to have 20, 30 million more than they already had. You know, and though that twenty thirty million might not seem like much, but that's more than what they have now. So if you think about all the moves they made. You know, that's a, you know, that's maybe that's keeping Emmanuel Sanders or maybe that's keeping Jack Rabbit or maybe that's, you know, that's maybe that's signing one or two, you know, bargain, you know, bargain basket players. You know what I'm saying? So it's just we we got pushed. You know what I'm saying? It's just like, you know, being somebody that, you know, say you're just a regular person and, you know, you just you lose your job. You know what I'm saying? You lose your job. It's just that income isn't coming in. So it just changes the whole game. It does. So it does, man. It's, it's just how it played out for the Saints. So it's just going to be one of them years where, luckily, the, the the core talent is still there, but you know you can only survive so much on that core talent. Um, it's just going to be one of those years where it's just kind of it's going to be like you say, man. It's a chance for fun. Like think about like 2017, how you know we were just pretty like how we felt after that New England game, and it was oh, like, bro, <laughs> like. <laughs> Here we go again, and then they just turned it around and just ripped off a shitload of wins. And the defense was, you know, defense was making a oh, stand, and oh, man. you know, it, it was just fun. Like even though we lost, you know, Minnesota Miracle, and that sucked and all that, but it was like it was a fun season. You know what I'm saying? I don't, I don't look back on that season with heartbreak. I just like man, that was that was a fun little season we had right there because nobody expected it. You know, after the start we had, we just coming off three seasons of seven and nine. We were just happy to win, you know, 10, 11 games that year. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, maybe it'll be something like that. Who knows? It could like, be. Unex- you know. We don't know. But we don't know. You know what I'm saying? It's just having that unexpected. It's, whereas, like, last the last couple of years, it's been like, we didn't even give a fuck if we won 13 games. It's like, oh, yeah, they won 13. Great. Big deal. What would he do, motherfucker? What are you going to do in the playoffs, Saints? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> That's but that was it, that, like that's real talk though, bro. <laughs> <laughs> you ain't give a shit. Done, bro. Thirteen game. Whoop de do. And and <laughs> the, um, are you are you surprised that um, and it, it, I know I know you said it before. You just really fucking hate how the Saints operate when in terms of. Extending players, but are you surprised that oh. Ramchek um, or Marshawn, either one, haven't been um, haven't been signed to extensions yet? I, I wouldn't say I'm surprised, but just it's just like like you said, man. It's like I don't know why they operate like this. Like, uh, my what's my dude name? Tre'Davious White. Like, what he he signed his extension what last year, year before last? It was the Bills, like. Yeah, I think it was maybe during 
I think maybe during, during the pandemic. Season. Yeah. Yeah. But anyway, it's like, why can't we just take care of this? Like, okay, with Lattimore, maybe I can understand it because, you know, he's had his little slow starts every year. You kind of wonder about, you know, work ethic and all that stuff. I, okay, I'll take it. You know, but like Ram Tech, like Ram Tech been rock solid like since yeah. week one of 2017. Since they like that, the that's what that should be an easy make him the highest paid right tackle he, in the he league. He should have been extended last year. He yes. should have been extended last year. Yes. You know what I'm saying? And they should know the number that he needs to be at and just get it done. Like, you know what I'm saying? But it's like, I don't know. It's like with their best players, but when they, with the players that they know are blue chip players. They just try to stretch this shit out, you know. But they'll give like motherfucking Junior Gallet or fucking I don't know. They, they'll pay a little motherfucker that's like questionable. But, but your your rock solid blue chips, they kind of play this hardball game where they like to kind of look, you know, with Jimmy Graham or whatever. They try to all arbitration mm-hmm. and all this mm-hmm. shit. Drew Brees and uh, you know, I, you know, my, well, I wouldn't say Mike Thomas to a certain extent, but they got a little dicey with Mike Thomas. Got a little yeah. dicey with Alvin Kamara. Yep, you know what I'm saying. So it's like, I don't know why they approach it like that when so many teams, I mean, shit, look, the Chiefs locked up, you know, Patrick Mahomes so quick. You know what I'm saying? Like, just lock them up, you know? Like, you, know, you, ain't, you ain't going nowhere, nigga. Like, you ain't going nowhere. Here you go. You know what I'm saying? And, and it works for the benefit because then you're able to control the player and you're able to, with the Saint, with the way the Saints know how to control the cap, you know, I mean, you lock up Ram check. I mean, his fucking... Salary cap probably wouldn't have been shit right now. You know what I'm saying? Right. Right. So, it's just, I don't know. It's where we saw it with, like, with Card Knicks. You know what I'm saying? Like, you knew Card Knicks was going to be a big blockbuster deal. Like, why you pay that man? You know? Yeah. Like, yeah. It just, it's, it's just how – I don't know if it's – I think it's a Mickey thing more than anything. Mm-hmm. Like, it's just mm-hmm. – like, that's just been their M.O. for such a long period of time. Um I mean, because I, I mean, I don't. I'm not a capologist, but I think even if they were able to get a deal with one of them right now, you know, I'm pretty sure the way that they would finagle it and, and structure it, like it would actually give them a whole hell of a not a whole hell of a lot, but give them some cap relief where yeah, yeah. they could potentially get a you know get a free agent. And then it again, I'm just going through the list that Greg keeps updating. Like you said, man, like there's still talent. Like out there just chilling, big chilling. But, but from Loomis's standpoint, is they're not going to let the salary cap be the reason that they get pushed into doing a deal with either of those players. Like they, like we always talked about, Mickey Loomis and them. They set that line. They set that number. That's it. <laughs> yep. Like you either. You either come to that number or you don't, but this is the number, and, it, and we will wait till the final day before we change our mind. You know what I'm saying? And that's kind of where they're at. Where I'm just like, like man, we couldn't we couldn't have done this a little sooner because I mean, once you wait until this point where you're in the fifth year option mode, mm-hmm. you just I mean, the play from the player standpoint, it's like shit. I may as well play this out then and just see right. what the, see, see what it's looking like next year. You know what I'm saying? <clears throat> Because, I mean, it just makes no difference to them, you know, at this point. Uh, no, you know, but it makes, maybe, it makes, maybe yeah. in year three, in year three is different because they're on their rookie deal, they're looking to get paid, stuff like that. So that's when you really strike because then you can finally, you know, maybe you can get a little uh, hometown discount a little bit because they're looking to, you know, cash out. But it, that is what it is. Like you said, it's super, it's super annoying um, and everything. Uh, but we'll see, like, you know, hopefully within like, you know, these upcoming weeks, we, you know, there is a deal that can be, that can be had with, with at least one of, and obviously I think Ram check is more like the easier, I would say easier contract to, to negotiate. Right. Um, Cause he's going to be the highest paid tackle. E- at least, easy. At least higher paid is left, left, right tackle. Yeah. Easy. Um, I could see potentially the Lattimore deal getting a little yeah dicey in terms of what, he wants to get paid compared to like what the saints are going to put on the table. Like I, I, I just know I can see that getting dicey. Um, but anything else, you know, I mean, we don't have a whole bunch to talk about saints, saints related. Um, like it's it like the NFL is, is a league that it's always fucking something Like you got 
the whole shit going on with Deshaun Watson in Houston that's Man. taken a whole completely I don't, I don't even want to talk about it. I don't even feel comfortable talking about it because I don't know. I, I, I don't know. I'll just say this. I, I'm not going to go into like the allegations and all that shit because we don't fucking know. You know what I'm saying? We don't fucking know. But I'll just say it absolutely is, is throwing a monkey wrench into the whole trade talk. Oh, like, yeah. It, you can't do it. You just can't. Like no team can do a trade right now with that. They just can't. You know, regardless of, you know, what's true and what's not because it's just hanging over your head. And from a Texas standpoint, you know, they don't know what's going on. They, they've said they want to keep, you know, Deshaun and, um, but they can't, if, if they were to trade him, they want, they want King's ransom. They want, you know, they want to get as, as much Everything. as possible. And they, and they can't get that right now because no team would be willing to give up as much when you don't know what's going to happen. Like he could, you know, he could end up in jail. He could end up, you know, suspended for a long time he could end up you know being an embarrassment to your franchise you just don't know because now the league is investigating um and as he's just, just it's what up to 12 now 12 like 12 allegations so it's just like ugh. like man like i don't i don't know what to say it's just like, 12 22 I, I i don't know it was it was 22 by like this or by friday so i don't i don't know Antonio like, Brown, Antonio Brown set out for a while, just with that one civil lawsuit, you know, with the with those um, allegations, and you know that didn't even come to a conclusion. Uh, but you know, he set out there for a while until you know Tom Brady came and you know threw him a threw him a leash. But you know, with this, and this is a franchise quarterback, you know, this ain't no wide receiver. So I don't know. I don't know, man. Like this is gonna be one of those stories we're gonna follow like all year. It's gonna be one of those things where we're just kind of waiting. You know, the more details come. I, I my only thing is I I'm just wondering from Deshaun's side. I just hadn't seen much fight back. I've seen a little, uh, you know, little excerpts from his lawyer or whatever, but I haven't seen that. You know, like the way the way this other lawyer coming, the one that's getting all these, you know, that's filled in all these lawsuits. Like he dropping he that motherfucker spitting. He dropping shit every day like a mixtape. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> he dropped the mixtape daily. Like I got another one. I got another one. I got another one. It's like, bro, like you gonna respond to this? <laughs> you killing your ass right now. Where where the response to this this track at? Like <laughs> <laughs> he dropping this after this, man. <laughs> and it got people wondering now. At first, people were like. Oh no, man! No, that's not just showing. You know what I'm saying? But now people like, uh, no, you know. So I don't know. It's ugly, man. I it's ugly. It's, it's ugly. it's ugly either way. Like whether it's true, it's terrible. Whether it's false, it's terrible. It's just terrible. All around, all around. Um, anything else happening in the league? Can we? Can I, can I, can I speak on this real quick? Because I. I, I've, I've forgotten so much what's already happened, but some, some things are still a little funny to me. Can we talk about the Chargers who hit the hit gold and Justin Herbert, who had one of the best rookie seasons of a quarterback I have seen in, yeah. in a long time. Just the balls, the throws, the athleticism, like completely blew everyone who saw him at Oregon away and watched him. They're like, who? Is Who this is this? Because <laughs> he was this was not the same player we watched in Oregon. So as a front office, they whatever. They instead of going off with the offensive mind, they go with the defensive guy, with the defensive coordinator and, and Brandon Staley. And I I I just think my 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 mindset on defensive head coaches is like there are so few that make a monumental difference in the NFL from the head coach perspective. Like I, whatever, but anyway, they go to defense. And then even though I know he was injured a lot and I know he was, you know, he was injured and you know, his injuries, but you add Joe Lombardi as your offensive coordinator, big Joe. Big and, Joe. Then you, and then you going from Hunter, Hunter Henry to Jared Cook. As tight end, 
I'm just say it. That's that, that, that's right. Not, not saying, not saying, dressing up for success. Uh, I don't know, man. Don't like it. Alone, don't, man. don't like it. And we, you know, we'll see. I mean, but man, Jerry Cook. I mean, you can at least say he does make plays, but God damn, doesn't he let you down? Like you, yes. you just gotta live with it. You gotta, you gotta say, well, he go give me some letdowns. I mean, damn, fumbles. Oh my God. And then you know he would just be like, eh, I will. <laughs> <laughs> well, what can you do? Shrug. <laughs> and then Joe Lombardi. I'm really interested to see how Joe, Joe Lombardi does because he got hired by the Lions as OC a couple years ago. And you know, he was like, he's like, I got Sean Payton's playbook. This is gonna be the Saints offense and Saints offense with Matthew Stafford and Lance Moore. They signed Lance Moore. Lance Moore was like, man, Stafford throws the ball so fast. It was like, oh man, it's just gonna be Saints offense on steroids, and that shit was horrible. <laughs> Got fired after a year and a half. You Big know what trash. <laughs> Big trash. And it just goes to show, like, the Saints offense is not like about the playbook. Like, if it was just that, then everybody would be running the Saints offense. Like, you know yes. what I'm saying? Like, it's not just plays written down and X's and O's and shit. Like, it's not that. It's one. It's you know, it's the design, the game to game designs of uh, what Sean Payton just implements to attack a specific defense. Two, it's Drew Brees, you know, with impeccable accuracy and his in-depth knowledge of the entire playbook and the playbook outside the playbook that he sets up with him and his pass catchers that they do just based on the defense that they see, that they're seeing. It's not even just, written down anywhere. Just so, muscle memory. You know, a, a freaking, it's just a savant at quarterback and, you know, chemistry he has with his pass catchers. Like, that's all it is. And so it's like, you know, you can't just copy and paste that on to Herbert, but I mean, at least he's working with the talented quarterback and it'll be interesting to see if he kind of learns some things from, you know, just in his second step with the Saints and, uh, you know, maybe design some nice little, you know, uh, route patterns and stuff like that for uh, Herbert and see if he can get a shine on. I'm a, I'm a fan, man. I'm a fan of Herbert. As somebody... Like you can go listen to the pods from last year. Was not a fan. Nope. At all. At no. All. None of us. Me, you, Patrick Claibon, Greg. Like Greg, nobody. Nobody. <laughs> nobody. Nobody. <laughs> and so <laughs> it's like so. And now I'm a fan. Like I, I, char- I rarely see Chargers games, but when they come on TV, I definitely watch it, man. I want to see the little dude ball out. Uh, as far as like around the league, I don't know, man. Like nothing really been going on. I've been kind of just keeping track of like. You know, the division, you know, Tampa, you know, it brought back Gronk. It looked like Tampa is just going to be like, you know, let's just run it back. Reboot this sucker and try to run it back. You know what I'm saying? Uh, we'll see. You know what I'm saying? I, I just saw a tweet earlier that they were like one of the least injured teams last year. Just kind of lucky, just lucky motherfuckers. Just, just Tom Brady. Just, Tom Brady, bro. You know what it is. Like, like damn, Drew, bro. All those, all that praising you do a goal, you can't get, you know what I'm saying? Like, get on the lookout for us, man. Like, <laughs> couldn't couldn't retire just one year before Drew. Just just one, bro. Just one. <laughs> but anyway, you know, so we'll see. You know, it's gonna be rough for them. Falcons, I've been kind of I, I thought they might I don't know, man. They they've been signing old players. I don't know. Like Falcons I, I mean, I, I'm I, not I, as long as Arthur Smith is the head coach, like I I can't take him seriously, bro. Like Arthur I Arthur Smith, man, you signed Arthur Smith. <laughs> I can't look at him and be like, I <laughs> It would be like if Pete Carmichael became a head coach, bro. Like who? Like who? You? Who you? Okay. <laughs> All right, Arthur. Sure. There are a lot of Panthers. I don't know what they're doing. So, I'd say you know, just from that standpoint, you know, we'll see what the Saints do. But you know, it's not like the defense, the the the, the division is looking like insurmountable right now. We'll see what Carolina does. They, you know, they were in a Deshaun Watson mix. Oh yeah, they were um, they, they were all in that bitch. <laughs> they were all in it with said they work out. They really want a quarterback. So, you know, they could draft, they could move up in the draft, try to get somebody, maybe they'll get a Mac Jones or you know, who knows. But uh no, no, we'll see, man. It's just, you know, taking it easy. It's this chilling time, man. I mean, it really is. It you know, it's, it's a little interesting to see where, you know, former Saints of are going, you know, big, big rank. Went to the Jets. 
Um, Big Ray. <laughs> no. Big Ray, so disappointing. <laughs> I mean, I. I've I've said my my piece on on Sheldon Rankins as a player when he was. But you never out. like you never no. like you never like Rank. Never nope. like Rank. Nope. I like Rank. I like Rank, and I don't care. Like injuries aside, he was a fine player. Okay, he started 2017, but the fact is, like injuries were part of the deal. Yeah, like, we, know, we didn't know that. It, was, it wasn't like he was like just some banged up player coming out of Louisville. Correct. You know that is that is that is true. That is true. That's I true. mean, 2017, when he broke his fibula, missed like the first six weeks, came off PUP, you know, played okay. He had a couple of sacks, but, you know, you can tell he was a rookie. Uh, 2017, eh, kind of a mess season. Played more of the kind of run-stuffer type role. Didn't yep. do much pass rush. Uh, 2018, breakout season, eight sacks. Almost getting like a sack every game. Past the pressure, his best season by far. But then he gets hurt uh the NFC championship game or the divisional game. I can't remember. I think, think it was a divisional game. Yeah, it was in the playoffs. He got hurt. Uh, Achilles comes Maybe back 2019. Uh, obviously working back from injury. Showed some things, but then gets injured again. And then it's like has to shave down some part of his foot that's deformed or something. And then comes back last year. Not good. So, you know, obviously a disappointing pick due to injury. And, you know, injury is a part of it. You know what I'm saying? You just got to take it. But it, it was disappointing. You know what I'm saying? I mean, but oh, I, was, yeah. I, just, I always wonder, like, if he didn't – if he didn't get that Achilles injury uh, in 2018 and, you know, just was kind of able to keep ascending where he would be. Uh, yeah, man. Down. Because he was – he was looking like – no, like a like a mini Geno Atkins, like in his prime. Like he yeah, was like just, a little mini Atkins. Yeah, yeah, he was on he was on the tear. Speaking of like Geno Atkins is also a free agent. <laughs> just just yeah. come from source. He's what he's what 32? 32? Yeah, sounds about right. Yeah. A lot, of, a lot of those 2010, 2011 draft guys. Yeah. Um speaking speaking of players, draft picks, fifth year options, I don't know what the deadline is. I don't think it's I don't think it's coming up anytime soon. But the Saints got a decision to make on on Marcus Davenport, bro. I think it's May. I could be wrong, but I, I think can, it's May where they have to have that decision. I can look it up, but yeah, I, I, it's that that's a huge decision. I, I don't see him doing it. Like not, not with it, like not with <laughs> not with how the CBA has changed it, where it's guaranteed. It's guaranteed. May, Hell, you're right. Bro. Yeah, May third. Okay. May 3rd. Yeah. Uh, if they did it, it's purely based off of I don't want to be wrong. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> like I don't want to look wrong on this trade. So that's the only reason they'll do it. But, like, just based off of <clears throat> availability and play, like, hell no, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. Uh, I'll let him play this season out as a contract year. If he balls out, you know, hey, then we, you know, maybe a franchise tag or we'll figure it out. But, you know, basically, you know, uh, fucking, you know, with the way they, I mean, this year looks bad as cap. Next year, even if the cap increases like 20, 30 million, man, our cap situation is bad. And I'm saying as somebody who like doesn't give a fuck about the cap, I know the Saints cap economics very well, but we got like 30 players under contract next year total. And like, there's no way to, there's no way to get from under any of them. Like it's, like you cut anybody, it's dead money central. Yeah, because they 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 pushed it so far in the, in the future already. Right, and now and, 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 and now, now and now the future and, is like the future is now, meaning next right, year. Right, and the total of those thirty players equals about one hundred and eighty million. Woo! So it's like, <laughs> so even Woo! if the cap went up to like two ten, like you still have to f- first fill your roster. So you talk about thirty players, you need to sign. 90 players going into camp, you know, <laughs> out. it's bro, it's <laughs> next year going to be crazy. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't even know what the fuck is going to happen, but you know, it is what it is. Like that day was going to come, man. Like, you know, but they got to hit this draft. Like this draft, we'll get to the draft at some point on the podcast as far as like, you know, really breaking down players. I know we've been slacking 
trying to get Tony and Pauline on. And I actually sent him, sent him an email this morning. Hopefully, he oh. gets us back. Yeah, but we we gonna dig into this draft. But this draft, like Who's they need, rough? like how many picks we got? Was six, seven, eight, something like that? Oh, we didn't even talk about like we 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 only getting one one pick taken from us next year. Hey, I was yeah. for the next year. Oh, little, that little jig. <laughs> take that shit. <laughs> you take that shit. But uh, yeah. So you know they gonna have to hit, man. Like. They don't. They don't need to come out with good, like four mm. quality picks. Like I'm not wow. saying like. I mean, I, that's. I just say I make that sound. On one hand, well, they have three third rounders. Like they, it's like first round, second round, and three third rounders. Like you gotta hit on them, them, even if you trade, like take two third rounders, moved up to this, whatever. Mm-hmm. You, they gotta hit on them because let's think about it. Have they really hit on three to four players in a draft since 2017? No. No. <laughs> they, have, they have not. <laughs> they have not, man. Like, and just look, look, like, look how 2017 just paid off for you, though. You know what I'm saying? Oh, for sure. So if you could – it's hard to repeat that. Like, yeah. It's, if it's, you could get a little closer to that, man, that – Like, if you just split the baby and, like, go – hit on half of the players you hit in 2017 with this draft, yeah. you're kind of, regardless of what it is. Now, here, here's the caveat to that. Here's where things get really big, right? So let's say that, so let's say we're saying three or four picks, right? Let's say that one of those players, you know, they, they maneuver around and they trade up and they draft a Mac Jones, they draft a Trey Lance. Cause I think, maybe Justin Fields slip, but I don't think he's going to slip that much. So I'm going to potentially just throw them out there. Mac Jones, Trey Lance. If you draft one of them and you hit on one of them, that completely, completely changes yeah. everything. Yeah, absolutely. Everything. That changes everything, you know, because you, you know, you, you, you buy yourself a lot of time, but, you know, and you know, I mean that that'll just be the perfect, you know, perfect scenario. And I mean, Mac, Mac Jones, boy, I mean, Mac coaches are gonna love. He said, "I'm gonna work out and throw at both Alabama pro days." Do you know both how many? Days. Do you know how many coaches? Went, huh, huh, like, that's like a, you that, just you just that's know. a pro right there. That's a pro player. That guy cares about football. <laughs> Just, just hear it, man. You can just hear it, bro. Oh, uh, the Patriots are gonna say there's no way you get past the Patriots. Bro. I can't no see way. him, bro. Can't do it's it. It's impossible. Can't see him getting past 15. I can't. If if he gets past Bill Belichick, I don't know if I want him. I'm <laughs> like, what the fuck do Bill know? I mean, what does Bill? I mean, they're. I don't know. With, Bill ain't. Yeah, Bill ain't the greatest drafter. Uh, that's what I'm. Hold on, bro. <laughs> I believe, if memory serves correctly, Bill could have had Lamar, too. Oh, yeah. yeah I'm, just, I'm just saying, bro. I don't know. Um, but I, I think you brought a, a great point in just saying how crucial this draft is. Like, you can't have a 2018 – well, well, first of all, that, that even you traded future access – assets or whatever but like you have they have to hit on this draft they have a number they have numerous picks i believe this is the draft they've had the most picks in probably oh, since 2017 yeah it's been um, a while bro and they, they they gotta hit them on them they have to hit on them man like man, I, I don't want to hit no 2020 oh we just have so many good players you know we just got the five players that come in and sit and learn nah y'all need Y'all need motherfucking, y'all need to reboot. I mean, not reboot, but y'all need to refill some spots, man. Like, they you need, need players. You need a potential linebacker next yes. to Demario. You need Ugh. a receiver. <laughs> you need a rock. Yeah. I mean, they just need to sign KJ Wright and just handle that. Like, Bro, I don't want, uh, I, I don't want them dudes no drafted. I have no faith. I have no faith, man. Even linebackers, I liked. I mean, fucking, um, <laughs> What's my dude from Alabama a couple years ago? Ruben Foster? Ruben Foster. Like, I like him, and we almost had him. Missed on him. 
not missed on him, but you know, got you know, got jumped in front by San Francisco, which I was upset about. But even he, he he didn't turn out to be something. So I was like, I don't know, man. I don't like I don't, I just I don't even have faith in my evaluations anymore. Like if they if they pick him, I don't have faith in it. Like I could love the guy, but if they pick it, I'm like, oh, I don't know. What you like, what did I miss? What did I miss? <laughs> something wrong. I don't know, man. But I just say like linebacker, wide right receiver, tight end cornerback like put an uh, edge rusher oh you know you don't lost talent or you don't lost depth at defensive tackle malcolm jenkins ain't getting any any younger bro there's there's some spots to fill bro yeah man my receiver i mean jesus you know we can't even get to the like just wants like running back you know what i'm saying like yeah like no, we, hey, like please. We talked about it in the early episode, like, man, like, if, if they could just draft fucking Najee and just, you know, re- utilize the run game and it'd be Jameis or yeah. whoever, like, I'll, I don't, like, at this point, Najee would be a luxury, bro. Like, he, yeah. he's a luxury. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so, so it's, so it's going to be interesting. Uh, this draft is going to be in person, you know, co- you know, the, the, the world's kind of looking up and, Shit, you know, restrictions are being eased up and more people are being, being vaccinated. Shout out to Wolf getting getting first shot. What you said next week? Next week, baby. There, there you go. About to have about to have the whole crew of the hashtag Saints Twitter podcast vaccinating this bitch. Like, yeah. I mean, so the draft's gonna be in person in Cleveland. Um April 29th. Like, like why huh. so fucking late? Like, I gotta wait. Like to the very end of April, though. Like, 29th. And then it's been weird. Been no comp, no comp, no combine or nothing. We don't know. No. Like, bro, it's weird, bro. Play, like teams don't know, don't know times. They don't know weight heights. Yeah, like, like the whole shit. The whole thing, like today when Ronda Moore, wide receiver from Purdue, like I guess people, I guess, I guess like people assume or whatever thought he may have been like five ten. Or something. Five seven. Five seven, nigga. <laughs> five seven. Like that changes a lot, you know. Even though <laughs> yes. like us, like like we like to say, oh, tape is just all about the tape. But man, teams, they are they live and die on that fucking shit. And yes. Like, you know? Cause they could just be like, you know, maybe they have someone like Cynthia Freeland, where like they put yeah. like put that you know that height into their equation. And it splits out like, yo, like it, like per this athletic profile, yeah. we shouldn't be drafting this player because he's too short. Right. Exactly. Like, yes, I, yeah. I'm. I am a, like for sure like an eighty percent tape guy, but like yeah. that other twenty percent, like those numbers, they they matter, man. They matter. They do. They do, man. They do. And you know. I, and I think they matter. To, to, I feel like they matter to teams more than they than they matter to like draft Twitter. Yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. That's no question. I mean, you hear Sean Payton, he talks about it. He, like, they... They're, 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 they're spark, spark score. Spark scores and metrics and all that shit, man. They love that shit, man. Like, that, that shit got Josh Josh Hill signed. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Probably why they, they signed Dan Arnold as a, as a free agent. Oh, absolutely. That's without question. They use that shit. They use that shit for free agents easily. Easy, because I mean, if you think about it, with free agents, it's like you know, what do you got to lose? So you're just looking at athletic profiles and what can give me some upside at some point. So they love using that shit. Uh, I'm be interested in uh, Devontae Smith because man, like 170, bruh. 170. Ugh. But the dude is so fucking good at running routes, man. Like that shit matters in the NFL. Like those players that. College players that come out that can run legit routes. Yes. They usually succeed, man. They usually succeed. I don't care what the speed is and all that. And he has all that. So it's like, oh, like that, that I, I'm just gonna be interested to see how his career plays out because like everything I see tells me he's gonna be a legitimate wide receiver. But man, that 170, man, he could just be injured by week two. I don't know. Yeah, it's tough, man. And then I think the I guess the counter argument to that is like you know, you let's say, high, you know, obviously a corner can't play press on him like the entire game, right? 
you know, that's just, just not feasible. Mm-hmm. But, you know, you put someone like Jalen Ramsey on him and they just just jam him up, bro. Just oh, he's over. <laughs> like, what, what, where, where are you going? Like, I, just so. Jalen going to put that one arm out. It's just over. <laughs> <laughs> All right, little, little nigga. Like, you just, stay, stay right there. <laughs> but, yeah, it, there's, some, there's for sure some interesting things. The Devontae Smith thing is interesting. I think Miami's kind of signaled that they're all in on Tua and mm. God, God bless them. <laughs> we we going to see, bro. Like, if if you give Tua let, – let's say they give Tua Jamar Chase and Devontae Parker and they got, he got Mike Gusecki and maybe they add a running back at some point and he still can't get it done. Oh, yeah. I, I, oh, yeah. I, I said it. I said it last year when I, I was on Twitter and people was trying to argue with me. Like the whole, I get Tua was hurt, going whatever, but that curve was wrecked when Justin Herbert and before Joe Burrow got hurt was was balling. Like yeah, that that curve, like you can't like that excuse of like oh you know, there's no OT. Like listen, same people, same people using the the argument. Talking about Caesar. Oh, LTAs playing out of position. Yeah. Rookies who can play, fucking play, and they play well. Like, right. That, that's just how, that's it. it. That's, that's it. <laughs> like, I, I'm, and I'm not, I'm not the, I'm not the one to try to like write off a player like immediately, blah, blah. I, I get that. But it's also like something we feel on this podcast. The, the team will think the team will think will tell you what they think of the player about what they do. I don't know that, and I know that the Patriots would do it. The whole fucking alternating series with offensive linemen, that was not normal. Like, let's be real, bro. No, no, no. That is not a normal as someone who played offensive line, that is not a normal fucking thing. Cause that tells you that they don't feel that the rookie was ready consistently every snap to snap exactly not normal about that shit not normal the fact that zach bond couldn't beat out and i mean i think their whole projection is Zach Bond, whatever but like even when uh quan alexander got hurt and anzalone was playing like they couldn't find snaps for for zach bond because anzalone ain't on the team no more right they could have they could have brought him back he's a free agent yeah. But Zach Bond couldn't breathe out Anzalone at linebacker? I, I don't know. I, I don't yeah. know, man. Just say it. Tell you what they're thinking right now. You know? That's it. So it goes back to your point that you made, and I, and I was going on a tangent about Tua, whatever, but it goes back to the point that you made. This draft, this they got, like you said, at least four players, I'd be happy with three. I'd be happy with that. I'll if they could, if they could draft three players, ho- one hopefully in the first round, because then you, you know, you get you get that extra year. But three yeah. players, I say, who are at the level. I'm not saying position, but the level of talent that they hit when they drafted CD Deuce. I think yes. you would be super content. Yes. Like he, they don't got to be Ryan Ramchek, who is a yeah. top three at his they position, but they could be CD, and that's not like CD's like a top five slot cornerback. Like yeah, man, let's like which is a starter. That's which a starter. is a starter, and he he is you know he is a very valuable piece. Like if they can find three players to add to the team, valuable that are young and rookies, they they, they it's crucial. It's crucial, man. Would have been a CD would have been a pro bowler if it wasn't for the stupid position stuff. Yes, that they do. You know, easily, but, easily. You, you know that. You know we. That's that was a good one. At least we got. You know that was a good draft pick. But uh, it was. Yeah, like like you said, man. If if they could get three, three to four players like that, just good players. I don't know how to describe it any different. But you know, like you know a good player when you see one. Like just get three or four good players. That means so much, man. It's just unbelievable how much that means to a team. I think you said it. That's such a great statement, and uh, we'll start wrapping things up. You know a good player when you see one. At no point last year, as, as a fan who's watched a lot of football, Saints-related, not Saints-related, watched broke down a lot of prospects, 
at no point when I watched Zach Bond and Caesar that I that I think at, at least last year were they good players. Like that exactly. that was concerning. Now they could turn their careers around and yeah. they may ball out next up season. And as fans, like shit, I, well, we we hope they do. But as also being realistic fans and being realists, at no point did I was I watching in the games and it was like that's a his play is is giving the Saints a plus at that position. Right. Didn't see it. And obviously they didn't see it either, or else they wouldn't have done the things that they did during the season. It's like you just see it, man. Like, look at Cam Joy, for example, his first season, 2011. He had zero sacks that season. Maybe one, but I'm thinking it was zero. I think he maybe had one at the end of the regular season, one sack on Cam Newton. I could be tripping. But he didn't have any sex. But I remember watching him, and I remember like this back like Saints Report days, and people complaining like, "Oh, Cam Jordan is he a bust?" I was like, "No, you could watch Cam Jordan, and you could tell he's good. Like he's good. Like no, he's not getting sex, but he's affecting the pocket. He's great against the run. You know what I'm saying? Like you could tell he's he, this is a, a quality player, but you know he needs to get better with pass rush or whatever, or he needs to get used differently because." Because, uh, you know, Greg Williams had him, basically used him as just like a run-stopping right, right, end, you know, left end or whatever. But, you know, you could see that he was a good player. So it's not so much about the stats and all that stuff. It's just the eye test, man. Like, you can just see if some guys yep. are playing well or not. It's like Ruiz and, and Zach. Well, I can't even say Zach Bond because you just barely saw him. <laughs> I mean, like, when he did get snaps, like, he made the tackle. Like, he he's a sure tackler. I did see that. So... I guess that's a good thing, but it's like you just didn't see enough of Reeves. It was just like, yeah. <laughs> it was bad, bro. <laughs> Wait, ooh, ooh. So, I don't know. So, we'll see, bro. Like, you know, we've seen players get better over time, you know. So, I don't know. We have, um, but like, we, we wanted to, to put something out this week because, again, nothing's been happening but we wanted to give you guys an episode. Both Ryan and I are going on vacation like this upcoming weekend. Uh, yes, sir. Much needed mini vacation for, for both of us. Um, you know, my, my, my homie going to go hit, hit Vegas. I'm going to Santa Ooh. Barbara. I just, whoo, bro. We, we, we both need it, bro. That's all. That's all I'm going to say. Need it, bro. We both need it. Like I need, I am, and I am a historical like workaholic. Like I'm a workaholic because I love my job. So like I have no issues usually. Like I can go and go get like a vacation. Like you know, take three days off. Maybe go to New Orleans for three, four days. Go back home, visit home, whatever. Like the biggest vacation I've done since I started working was I went to Hawaii for almost like a week last two years ago, and. My, my body and just where I am with my job right now is telling me like, you need a break. Um, yeah, bro. And that is something that, uh, you know, this is getting to a complete, this is going to get into the uh, philosophical podcast, but like, you gotta listen to your body. <laughs> yeah, and I, my body is like, you need a break. You need to just fucking decompress and relax. And I'm going to do that this weekend. I'm leaving on Friday, going to Santa Barbara. I'm going to hit up the beach. Uh, I've been in a weird fucking, and I'm not even a, like, I don't even like hitting up steakhouses, but I've been in a movie like, I want to go to a fucking steakhouse. So, yes. Me, the fam, uh, my, my daughter, who just recently turned 11 on Sunday, like, we going to hit up a steakhouse, be on the beach, just living life. You're going to be in Vegas, uh, having fun, much needed. So anyone to our, to our listeners, you know, for, you know, our, our show, we will be back next week. We just don't know when, but we'll be back. And hopefully next week we can, um, we can have a, a, a guest on. Yeah, absolutely. But you know, hey, we need a break too, man. <laughs> yeah, we do. We do. Yeah. So um I did want to give uh a shout out to uh someone who gave a, a Patreon uh contribution. Um her name's Anya. Uh I re- we reached out to her via email because we trying to figure out 
like who this person was because the contribution was was very generous. Um, and she basically said like, she's not even a football fan. She's not a Saints fan. She just really saw that me as a social worker was having a bad day. And just, you know, in regards to just what, what we deal with the social worker, she just felt, you know, in her heart to, to donate. So I know you don't, you'll never listen, probably listen to this podcast. I know you're not a football fan, you're not a Saints fan, uh, but Miss Anya, we really appreciate it. Um, it was very thoughtful of you and, and thank you for, for being so kind yeah. and so generous. Yeah, like I told you, man, it's shit like that, just like, man, it's like, man, humans, we gonna be all right. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Humanity ain't so bad, man. Like, you know, just the fact that people out there just care, you know, people care, you know what I'm saying? So, uh, you they know, do. I, I, I love seeing that, especially for the work you do, you know? Yeah, I, and that, it was it was very sweet to see. So, anyway, uh, what, you know, it's, you, you know it's gonna fucking happen, right? Like, we gonna, we gonna go on vacation. Like, we both, we both leave on Friday. Oh. And you know, you know, <laughs> something's gonna happen, bro. <laughs> or we not oh, gonna be. Oh man, it wouldn't surprise me one bit. We got, we got not gonna be around really a computer. I'm not. I don't even plan on taking my laptop with me. Like some shit's gonna gonna fucking happen, and we not gonna even be able to record an episode. Practice. I'm calling it right I'm now. Gonna, I'm gonna be in a. I'm gonna be in the bathroom. We're gonna be on the phone doing some Stop. phone zoom. Stop. 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 I don't even know how to record on the phone zoom. Whatever, man. Well, I'll, I guess we'll figure it out. <laughs> but I can, I can just fucking feel it. But anyway, as always, if if that were to happen, which I'm predicting, it's gonna fucking happen. We'll figure out a way to cover it and <laughs> get it out to the people. Um, but thanks everyone for your support. Um, the the number of masks or almost completely out i think sorry, i think we may have like what like a couple left um just a couple just a couple so um if you know we got to kind of see what the demand is we need to potentially w- reach out to nola hat plug to see if we need to order another batch um i've been looking at some things like in terms of um like coffee cups and some shit that like looks really cool but we got to like copyright shit and you got to be very mindful of that or else the NFL waves their fucking finger at you or third party companies won't do it because they feel like they're potentially going to get in trouble for, for violating copyright. So anyway, all that side, uh, thanks for all our listeners. Thanks for all support. We'll be back next week uh, with the episode, hopefully with, with the guests. Um, I know either Anusha is willing to come on the show because she's dropping an article um, at the LA times tomorrow um, or potentially someone else. So uh, we, we keep you guys informed. We keep giving you guys content. So thanks for being along for the ride. Everyone who voted for Ryan, appreciate the love. Repping. Much love. Uh, uh, repping bargain band Rick Ross, Ricky Rose in, in this bitch. <laughs> uh, but it, it was fun. It, it was fun. It kept, kept us entertained. Um, with that, we can get out, get out of here. We're out. Peace. Catch those springtime vibes all over Arizona. Break out of the winter blues by hitting the water at one of our lake and river parks. Take a hike among the wildflowers. Just make sure to stay on the trails and leave the flowers for the bees. Discover Arizona's best kept secret and visit azstateparks.com slash amazing to start your springtime adventure. Oh, 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 O'Reilly. You've got questions? O'Reilly Auto Parts has answers. Need a pro you can trust? We've got that too. No matter what you need, our professional parts people have the training and expertise to help you do things right. Deep automotive knowledge. Just one part that makes O'Reilly stand apart. The professional parts people. Oh, oh.